Hello everybody, my name is Kyle Webster. My presentation is kind of long-winded comparison of surface enhanced Raman spectroscopy of common bacteria on gold and silver substrates. So I know nobody knows what almost any of those words mean, but we'll get there. Um, the motivation behind the project was that I'm a human physiology major, pre-med. I was sort of thinking of trying to find a better way to do a blood test for bacteria. Currently, you have to draw the blood, purify it to get the bacteria, grow the bacteria for several days, and then send that bacteria off to get the DNA sequenced. And you know, by the time it's over, you know, that's why blood tests, when you go to the lab, it takes you know, three, four, five days, sometimes a week or more to get results back. So that's sort of the motivation behind why I'm using this specific technique to try and lay the foundation for building a better blood test. So just an overview of the presentation. I'm going to try and uh, explain the science in a way that hopefully most of us can understand. Um, I'll then explain the project, show you guys the results, and we'll discuss the results. So first of all, what is SIRS? Surface Enhanced Raman Spectroscopy. There's two parts to that, obviously. You have the surface enhanced and you have the Raman Spectroscopy. First, we're going to start with Raman Spectroscopy. So what is Raman Spectroscopy? Um, essentially, there are three ways that light interacts with matter, anything it touches. You can either have it be absorbed, have it reflected, or have it trans it's called transmission when it essentially passes right through it. So Raman spectroscopy deals with the light that's reflected or scattered off of whatever you're looking at. So essentially, in Raman spectroscopy, you put whatever you're looking at, say bacteria, onto a microscope, you shine a laser on it, the laser bounces off the bacteria and is changed in some meaningful, measurable, repeatable way, and then you look at what happened to that light and that tells you something about whatever you were looking at, whatever that substance was. So that's Raman spectroscopy. Now the problem with Raman spectroscopy is that out of that meaningful light that's changed, you only see maybe one in ten million photons or packets of light. So you need a lot of light to be reflected in order to see something meaningful. So the surface enhanced part of SIRS uh, essentially amplifies it. Um, so everything is the same. You still have the light, you still have the substance, you still have it bouncing off, being changed. None of that changes. The only difference is that yellow disk there. You put the bacteria or whatever you're looking at onto a layer of gold and that gold serves as an amplification device. It amplifies the signal. It doesn't change it in any way, but now you can see it a lot easier, meaning that you have to put less substance or less bacteria there. So whereas before we would have to grow the bacteria for several days to get enough of it to be able to see it, now you can put a very small amount, like a billionth of the amount that you had to put on before, and you can still see it. It's important to note that the gold or any substance there doesn't actually change what you're seeing, it just amplifies it. So think of it like a magnifying glass. You're not actually changing what you're looking at, it's just easier to see. So now that I've hopefully decoded the science a little bit for you guys, we'll go into the project. So the idea of the project is to use SIRS to analyze several common strands of bacteria. Um, typically a lot of the work in the field has been done on gold chips or substrates. However, the lab that I work with just recently developed a silver substrate. Um, so the idea was that take uh, some bacteria, run it on silver and gold at the same time in parallel and see what the differences are. Um, from previous work that's been done in the literature, um, we know that certain compounds show up much better on silver than they do on gold. Some compounds don't even show up on silver, they only show up on gold. So looking at these bacteria that had previously only been looked at on gold, on both silver and gold, could maybe we could find a better way to look at the bacteria. So again, everything in the experiment is the exact same. The only difference is the silver versus the gold. And maybe the light is changed in a different way because the bacteria is on silver instead of on gold. Or maybe you get an amplification where you get a bigger signal because of it. So we've uh, explained the science, we've explained the project, now I'm going to show you the results. So this is the first uh, spectrum that I took. It was E. coli BD6757, that's the specific strain of E. coli. Um, and we took it on gold and on silver. So the green is the gold and the red is the silver. And as you can see, even just you know, knowing very little about SIRS, there are some clear and obvious differences. For one, the gold has a much higher intensity. Right? The peaks are a lot taller, meaning the signal is more intense compared to the silver. There are some peak shifts where 
this peak here may be the same, but this peak here shifted to the left a little bit. So we can clearly see that there are some differences, but now we have to understand them in a more quantitative way. So how do you analyze the spectrum that we have now? There's actually three steps to that. First, you take what are called sample spectra. So there are eight common what are called purine metabolites, or they're, they're chemicals that are released from these bacteria while they live. And these eight purine metabolites are known to make up the spectrum that we see. So you have to take sample spectra of just these eight purine metabolites in water, nothing else in them. Once you get those eight spectra on silver and on gold, you create what's called a best fit model. So for those of you don't, that don't know what a best fit model is, essentially you take all of the eight uh, purine spectra, you average them all together, and then you put a coefficient in front of each one and you try and you say maybe you, know, you add more adenine as opposed to AMP. And you try and you mess with the coefficients to get it as close to the spectrum of E. coli that you took. Um, and then after that, you can use those coefficients, those ratios, to analyze it and say, well, now we know that on gold, this E. coli is mostly adenine and there's no AMP present. Well, why is that? Is it because of the way that the, the bacteria binds to the gold? Is it something, you know, maybe it binds to the gold but doesn't bind to the silver? So you have to have this best fit model and these coefficients in order to really understand and be able to quantitatively analyze the spectra that you got. So after taking the E. coli spectra, I focused on the sample spectra. Uh, and I had pretty good results. This is an example. Again, we have wave number, which is just how much the light has changed. Uh, you have a relative intensity. So there's not any absolute re uh, measure of intensity, but it's just relative to the other peaks. Uh, and so this is an example where you took adenine on a gold chip. You take two trials, which is why there's two lines, but it's the same thing. And what you're looking for is for these two lines to match up as close as possible. If you have one line looking significantly different from the other one, that means that something went wrong, maybe you had some contamination. Um, like I said, because SIRS is so specific and you need such a small amount of bacteria, that also means you need a really small amount of contamination to totally mess up your results. So this would be an example of a spectrum that looks pretty good. You have the peaks matching almost identically. Um, the intensities, the, the height of the peaks match very closely. Uh, here's the same adenine, the same compound, but on silver. Again, good results. We have good matching peaks. Um, good heights that are matching, but you see between the two that they're clearly different. There are, there are slight differences between the same compound, the same thing you're analyzing, the same laser, just gold and silver. So that's good. So we have now completed the first step. However, when I went and I looked at all of the spectra together, um, specifically in the silver spectra, I started to see something. So this is an example of the first take I did on the silver substrate, again, the adenine. And I noticed these two peaks here, right around 1,000 and 1032. And those shouldn't be there from what I was expecting, what my advisor was expecting. So I went and I looked at more silver spectra. This is AMP, another one of those purines. And again, we see those two peaks here, and this time they're even bigger. And we looked at another one, and these two peaks, again, shouldn't be here and are even bigger. So when I went and I looked at all my silver spectra and I put them all together, this is what it looks like. You notice there's no peaks that are the same across all the spectra except for these two peaks that shouldn't be on any of them. So unfortunately that meant that most likely I had some sort of contamination with the silver chips because I didn't see these peaks on the gold chips. Um, and the fact that it was on every single silver spectra and these silver spectra were taken over a period of months with several different batches of silver chips sort of led us to believe that it was something wrong with the chip production process where somehow some contaminant was getting in there. Um, some small contaminant in some cases, but it was enough to skew the results and essentially make the, all of the silver spectra useless, which is very unfortunate since that was the point of the project. So I thought I had finished it. I didn't finish it, so I had to go back and I had to redo all of those spectra on silver, which I did complete. Here's the example of an old and a new. You can see these two peaks, obviously very big and not supposed to be there on the old. Nothing down there in that, spec in that area on the new. So I was able to go through, and I do now have all eight compounds on gold and on silver um, without contaminants. But unfortunately, due to the time limitations of the project and me having to redo 
literally months of work, uh, I did not get to the rest of the analysis that I wanted to do. So the results, the end results are essentially we have the good spectrum of E. coli BD6757 on gold and on silver. We have good sample spectra of all eight purines on gold and on silver. And we've sort of now laid the foundation for further, further exploration. We've done the, you know, the bulk of the work. Now we just have to go through in future projects and make that best fit model and start to do some of the more in-depth quantitative analysis. So yes, thank you very much. Any questions? Yes. So did you conduct SIRS on just the chips without substrate on? Yes. So I actually, I thought I put it in the presentation. It's in the paper. But yes, I did do that. And typically, it's supposed to be noise. You don't see any signals. It's just complete nothingness. When you took, when I went with the silver chips that I thought were contaminated and I took surge spectra, it was noise except for those two peaks. There was nothing there, but there were those two peaks um, which confirmed our suspicions that the entire batch was contaminated. And so then there was a process of throwing away all of the silver chips we had created, having to redo it meticulously, remake the chips, test those chips to make sure that they were clean, there were no contaminants, which we did, and it worked. But again, it took months off the clock that we had already completed and had to redo all of that stuff. So, yes? Did you figure out what the contaminant was? Nope. Uh, the person that makes the chips uh, had no clue what it was. They, it looked sort of like adenine. Um, so maybe some adenine had gotten into the container of chips that's supposed to be nothing and reacted with something in there. Because it wasn't an adenine spectrum, but it looked a little bit like that. But they never, the, the, the person in our lab that makes the chips never figured out what the actual contaminant was, unfortunately. Yes? Would the results uh, change if the contaminant was something else than what you would think? Essentially, no, because you can't have any contaminants. That's, that's the sort of trade-off with SIRS. It's great because it can see stuff at such tiny concentrations. But the trade-off trade -off is if you have any contamination at all, it's going to co completely mask your signal. Or in that case, those two peaks in some of the spectra were bigger than any of the other peaks that were there. So it's, it's a trade-off. It's a double-edged sword. But as long as you ensure that there are no contaminants and you have a clean spectra, it can be very useful in you know, applications like this where we're trying to lay the foundation to build a better blood test for bacteria. Thank you very much.